that, then we automatically get so many benefits. And the people that we work with, they also get those benefits. So what we're saying is, uh, we're not teaching theoretic, theoretical or theological knowledge. We're teaching a practical knowledge, a way of life. You can follow our example. You can study these books, study the information on our website, download all the scriptures, study them at home, post your questions on the forum, discuss with us, discuss with the other devotees, gradually understand how to apply this knowledge, and then start teaching others. Get a little group together in your hometown or whatever. Share these videos with them. Share these teachings with them. And then gradually uh, start a community like this on the, out in the forest somewhere where you can live a nice, comfortable, uh, pure, spiritual life away from the city and all that anxiety and all that craziness. And then you can practice spiritual life without any distraction, without any interference. That's what we would like you to do. We don't want you to be a follower, you know, or anything like that. We don't want first. We want friends. We want people who are strong. And to be strong, that you, that you have to do is follow the teaching. Not just imitate it. Not just say, oh yeah, I'm a follower of Jesus. No, we don't want that. That's weakness. We want leaders, not followers. Huh? We want people who can do things that we're doing. And even on a large scale, maybe. I'm not a very powerful leader type person. I'd much rather be sitting in the back room composing music. But because nobody else is doing this, I have to do it. It's my duty. It's the instructions from my master. So I'm giving the same instruction to you. Learn this esoteric teaching and then pass others and make them strong. And you'll get benefits. You can't even begin to imagine. So today, uh, I'd like to talk about Vedanta. Vedanta Sutra. That week, uh, I found some old files that had been sitting around for years. Uh, some things that I wrote about Vedanta back in 2003, 2004. And so I posted them on the Naimisharanya forum. I hope you all got a chance to read them. Um, or if not, then we'll talk about it now. So what is Vedanta? Veda means knowledge. Specifically, it means knowledge about the absolute truth. We've talked about this many times before. The difference between relative truth and absolute truth is that relative truth is temporary and conditional, and absolute truth is eternal and unconditional. It's always true in any situation, in any condition. So Veda specifically means absolute truth, unconditional, eternal, spiritual truth. Now, Veda can also include relative truth, but when it talks about relative truth, it talks about it in relation to absolute truth. So in other words, the relative truths are clearly identified as relative. Uh, and that's still Veda. So for example, the Vedas, some sections of Vedas talk about what are apparently material activities, like religious rituals, uh, or the procedures for um, worship and sadhana, or how to perform different activities for salvation in spiritual life. And these activities are, at least on the surface, material. But because the purpose of these activities is to realize the supreme absolute truth, those activities aren't material at all, uh, and neither are the descriptions. So when Relative truth is used in the service of absolute truth. It also becomes uh, connected with the absolute truth and in its proper relation to the absolute truth. So this is also Veda, or true knowledge. And Anta means the end or the conclusion. And we've also discussed this many times. There has to be an end to knowledge. It can't go on and on and on forever, like without any conclusion. Huh? This, this material science today is generating more and more information, more and more knowledge. Uh, so much information that nobody can keep up with it. So what happens when people 
try to understand too much information. They get information overload. They get like so uh, overwhelmed with all this data that it, it stops being meaningful to them. Uh, and they can't retain any of it. Like, can you remember what you read in the news yesterday? Huh? Probably not. Why? Because it's just meaningless information. It's stuff that's happening to somebody else in some other part of the world, and it doesn't really affect us, at least not directly. So why even bother to retain it? Huh? We hear so much information that is actually irrelevant to our existence that when we come in contact with the Vedas or with the absolute truth, we tend to take it in the same way. Like, oh, this is just theory, or oh, it's just theology, just philosophy, just the absolute truth. <laughs> but actually, if we take up this absolute truth and let it go deeply into our minds and hearts, we find that it changes our whole experience of life. It changes our whole perspective. It changes our point of view. That means it changes our consciousness. Huh? Just like right now you're seeing me from the front. Huh? But if we move the camera over there, then you would see me from the side and you would see a, a very different view. Huh? So similarly, when we change our point of view on life, we see things differently. We actually have a different experience. Uh, two people in the same place at the same time can have a completely different experience depending on their point of view. I like to give the example, because I've seen it many times, um, in the temple. I used to live in a farm community where they had a very beautiful temple. And people would come in, and like one, one person would be standing there like, Oh, Krishna, and having this beautiful experience. And their friend would, or husband or wife or whatever would be next to them going like, oh, what are we going to go, oh, you know, let's, let's get out of here. Come on, let's get the Completely different experience, even though they're in the same place, the same time. Huh? The same things are going on around them. Everything is the same. But what is different? The point of view. What is different is their ontology. You hear me use this word a lot. I bet no, none of you have ever looked this word up in the dictionary. Have you? What does it mean? Anybody type in the chat box. What does ontology mean? That's a cop out. That's a cop out. What is the what is the main meaning of ontology? The branch of metaphysics. That's too vague. With the nature of being. Ah. Our frame of reference. Hmm. Yes. Frame of reference. Huh? A frame of reference is the same as a point of view. Just like the frame of reference right now on the on the picture here is I don't know how far you have it zoomed in, but you know it's about like this, right? So similarly, the frame of reference with which we view the world determines what we can see. If something is within the frame, we can see it. If it's outside, we can't. Huh? Just like I'll never forget the first time I saw my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, he was chanting with some of his students in Tompkins Square Park in New York in 1966. I was on my way to a recording session or something and I was walking by and here are these people all dressed in orange and they're singing this funny song and a couple of them were dancing, you know, this weird dance I've never seen before. And, you know, it was the 60s, right? And it was Greenwich Village. So, like, anything can happen. <laughs> so, uh, it wasn't too unusual for me to see these people, but I wondered about it because I had been reading books on yoga and meditation and stuff like that, and obviously uh, these guys were some kind of 
monks or religious people, and they were doing some kind of spiritual process, but I had no information about that process. It was outside my frame of reference. So even though I was studying philosophy, I was reading books about yoga, you know, autobiography of a yogi and stuff like that, I had no information on what these people were doing, and so to me, it was meaningless. When something has no value to us, we say, oh, it doesn't mean anything to me. Isn't that right? So when something is outside of our frame of reference, it has no meaning to us. The meaning comes from the context. And if we have no context for a certain idea or a certain experience or a certain kind of relationship or whatever, then we say, oh, it doesn't mean anything. 